Why do you guys like roll your R's like Earls? Just Earls, Earls. Try that, Earls, okay. So there Jesus is at Earls. He's just booked a table for 10. Think about it. He's booked a table for 10 people. Yes, Mr. Jesus, your table is ready, sir. Won't you come through, please? Sits down. His first guest arrives. Two guests. Nice little prostitutes. Little dress up to about, okay, here. She's got a top that's kind of revealing everything, okay? She's chewing gum. She's like giving out cards, you know what I'm saying? It's all the waiters. See you later, dude. Excuse me, who are you here to see? We're here to see Jesus. I'm sorry, I don't think Jesus wants to be with you. I mean, look at you. And Jesus quickly pops up and he goes, no, no, they're with me. They're with me. Aren't you like like a pastor, dude? Aren't you like a religious dude? Don't you preach like the Bible thing? Yeah, that's right. They're with me. Off they come, the little prosies come. They sit down, they've got like this whole makeup thing going, right? Red lipstick. You know what I mean? Yo, Jesus, what's up? Cooling you, girls. Then a whole bunch of tax collectors and robbers walk in as well. Some Greek guy with his chest open here, you know, gold chain coming in. Like a shady character, like looking around like this. Because he knows how much he's stolen. Yo, I'm with Jesus, eh? My name is Mario. Yes, where is Jesus? Eh? I'm here for the table of, of ten for Jesus, huh? He like owes everybody money. Everybody knows who he is. They're like, you can't be with Jesus. Yes, I'm with Jesus. Jesus like, yeah, he's with me. I watch. In walks the whole pastor entourage. <laughs> and then they walk with their big ties and the big Bibles big enough to like choke something or whatever it is or kill you, right? Oh, hallelujah, brother. Praise the Lord. God is good. Woo, yeah. They've just had an amazing meeting and they see Jesus hanging out with the prosies, with Greek Mario and everybody else. They look at his disciples and they're like, brother, how could this be possible? Who are these people hanging around with the master? And Jesus stands up. He doesn't even do it secretly. The Bible says he shot right back. He looked at them and he said, those who are sick need a doctor. Not those who are well. Look at me. Let me tell you why you're here. To have an open house. A house that says, I don't care if you're a prostitute. I don't care if you're just a normal dude. I don't care if you're Mario. <laughs> Our house is open, man. And let me tell you something. Well, we're just afraid that sin will come into the house then. Listen, dude, that's the whole point. Hello, that's the point. Because Jesus is able to change anybody, anything. That is why he died on the cross of Calvary. That's why he died. That's why, he, that's the whole point. That's why the church is here. That's the reason. That's the reason. John chapter 3 and verse 17 says, God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point out an accusing finger. You sinner. Telling the world how bad it was. Listen, I love this. Because I, I, I can relate to this. He came to help. To put the world 
right again. Wow. So many times I see the church point the finger. You're bad. Change your ways. Right? Come on. Mean spirited. But Jesus said, you know what? I came to help. Hey, how can I help you, Ryan? Hey, how can I help you, Brad? How can I help you? How can I make it right again? Before Jesus gets crucified, he comes, kneels down, pulls out a basin of water, and he starts washing the disciples' feet. The highest act of humility that Christ the Savior will get on his knees and wash stinking feet. Jesus is still washing the feet of the world today. And then he looked at his disciples and he said, go and do likewise. Amen? Are you listening to me tonight? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here to know the Savior and make the Savior known. Amen? I want to read you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw it to a close. I've got like a hundred other pages to go. Can we go till about 12? Is that all right? Some of you are like, yeah, sure. We love your message, but hey, that's like way enough. Okay. All right. I'd like to read you an email that I took out of a book that I read recently. And this email was sent to the pastor of that church. The church is called Gateway in the United States. How would you respond to an email like this to all the pastors in the house? Okay, here it goes. Hello. Hello. She writes, I met you last Sunday. She's talking to the pastor now in an email. A friend of mine invited me to Gateway. I have to confess, church was the last place I ever wanted to go. But I have to be honest that your approach, the entire church approach, has me hooked. Hooked on Christ. I really never thought I'd say that. I'm trying to do things to learn to bring me closer to Christ and to be more open and less judgmental towards organized religion. But now I'm afraid. I want Gateway to be my church home where I come for comfort, for guidance, with my hopes and dreams, failures, everything. What initially got me to attend was the philosophy, come as you are. But you see, I am a lesbian. I'm in love with another woman, and we will spend the rest of our lives together. This may not seem like a big deal, But I have Christian family who oppose our relationship to the nth degree. So my question is, are we welcome and supported within Gateway? I guess what I need is some assurance from you or Ted, the assistant pastor, that I'm not going to hell because I'm in love with a woman. Lost sheep trying to find my way. Okay, hold the boat, stop the train. How do you deal with it? Listen to me, folks. We live in the 21st century, and we're going to have to deal with stuff like this. We can't hide under a bush. We can't put our head in the sun. Oh, there are no homosexuals. I promise you, they're in your churches right now. There are no lesbians. They're in your churches right now. Right now. And my question is this. What do you tell Samantha? Do you tell her that she's uniquely unable to receive the grace of God? That even though Christ died on the cross to wash, sanctify, and justify people who struggle with everything from materialistic greed to lustful heterosexual thoughts? And even though they may still fight the temptation to hoard or look at pornography, even after receiving Christ's forgiveness, is she somehow uniquely different? 